Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to today's webinar um, with the Technical University in Hamburg in their program about the deg master's degree program, Engineering and Technology um, Management. Um, before we get to the content of the webinar, of course, I would like to introduce to you um, our speaker for today, um, and that's uh, for today, Stefan Scheune from the um, Technical University in Hamburg, the Northern Institute of Technology. And um, you can see here there are two email addresses you can use um, and um, of course uh, we encourage you to get in touch if you have any questions but of course Stefan will um, let you know later on as well um, if uh, you have any questions how to get in touch. My name is Hani Geist. I'm with the German Academic Exchange Service here in the San Francisco office. And of course, if you have any um, DAD specific questions, um, you can of course always get in touch with me afterwards as well. And what's today's agenda? So first of all, I would like to introduce to you uh, DAD um, and what we can uh, do for you here in the United States. And then I will introduce to you two uh, scholarships and grants opportunities that are available to you if you decide to study in Germany, more specifically um, at the Technical University in Hamburg. And then we, we really focus today um, on the Technical University in Hamburg. You will learn more about the double degree program in technology management. Um, you will hear about the content of the MBA program. And then, of course, um, a lot of the details on how to apply and, and also why you should apply um, to the university. And I'm sure you will also hear a little bit about Hamburg and what the city has to offer. Um, this webinar is uh, recorded and will be shared on our webinar page where we also have our archive of all the other webinars in our webinar series and along with the recording you uh, find this presentation but also a handout or actually in this case several handouts um, about the program and the technology university. And of course, you will uh, be able to get in touch with us afterwards as well. Um, the email addresses are in this PowerPoint presentation, but of course, it will also be included in the presentation of the Technical University in Hamburg. Now, um, what is DAD? Um, simply put, DAD is the um, higher education arm of the German government. DAD represents higher education abroad here in the United States. Uh, we have uh, two offices, the New York office and the San Francisco offices. And uh, both of our offices really uh, counsel um, about studying and research in Germany. So if you have any uh, general questions, we're always here to assist you and, and answer questions. But then, of course, more importantly for you, uh, we offer funding for you uh, to study in Germany, um, to pursue masters and a PhD in Germany, but also to do research. Um, and this is really available to all academic fields, all stages and all disciplines. So uh, what do we offer um, in, in, in detail? So we, we do offer a study abroad, we offer senior thesis research, we even offer internships, and you will, um, for a long-term funding, you will receive a monthly stipend. Um, for short-term funding, it's usually lump sum. Um, you will always get health insurance and in some cases also travel reimbursement. And again, I would like to stress this is open to students in all fields and this is available to you um, for a program that's offered in English. So it doesn't have to be a program in German and you actually don't need to know German for the funding. Um, it is really uh, depending on the program and if the program only requires you to speak English, then you will only need that for our funding. But, and I'm sure Stefan will also uh, talk a little bit about that maybe in his presentation that uh, if you uh, pursue a program in English you definitely don't need German at least not for the academic setting but knowing some German is of course uh, an advantage and I would highly encourage you to learn at least a little bit um, before you embark on your big journey uh, to Germany. So um, 
what do we offer? So one of our uh, flagship scholarships to study in Germany is the study scholarship uh, for graduates. This is um, available for students who would like to pursue a two years master's in Germany and students can apply um, as a senior. So you don't have to wait to graduate. You can apply in your senior year, um, especially if you would like to not have a big gap in between your bachelor's degree and your master's. Uh, so you can apply in, in your senior year and then um, start your master's program in the following winter semester. And so for the application, um, you would only need to know where you would like to study um, and only after uh, we let you know whether or not you receive the grant, uh, that's when you would need to um, prove that you uh, indeed uh, got accepted. Uh, for this scholarship, you uh, receive about 750 euros, which is at this point about 800, 850 dollars a month. Again, health insurance, liability insurance, and also travel stipend. Um, I'm sure Stefan will, will touch on that a little bit, um, maybe about um, living as a student in, in Hamburg, but uh, generally speaking in Germany, um, if you have between 750 euros and a thousand euros a month um, that's when you can really cover your rent and food and other uh, living expenses so um, on average students in Germany don't need more than uh, 750 to a thousand euros and um, 60 are awarded annually I'm sure um, you you want to know uh, how uh, how likely it is that you receive this grant. So uh, to give you an idea, about one out of out of eight students normally receive this grant. And to put together a strong application, you would have to put together a study uh, proposal, why you want to study at this university. And the more detailed you are, the better. And also have a strong recommendation letter. And then so for this scholarship and also for the next one, uh, keep in mind that we are merit-based um, funding organizations. So really the focus is on academia and not, for example, on, on, on a need-based um, evaluation or on uh, your um, ability or willingness to be an ambassador um, for the United States. And now, finally, uh, the research grant. Um, this is uh, something for you maybe to look for in the future if you would like to pursue a PhD um, after you uh, finish your master's um, or for, for you if you would like to do some research in Germany at the university. Um, we offer research grants short term and long term. And these are really available to students after they graduate uh, with their bachelor's, but then also to students um, who pursue master's and, and PhD in the US. But this is also available to students who would like to pursue a full PhD in Germany. And you can see here, uh, the funding is even a little bit more generous than for the master's program, but uh, the rest uh, remains the same. And um, here it says invitation by host institution is essential. Um, this is in particular particular important if you would like to do research at the university and if you would like to collaborate uh, with a professor or with a research group um, that's at the university. Now, there are a lot more um, scholarships and grants that are available um, and there's a lot more information. Um, you can find all of that at daad.org and you can also connect with us on the various social media channels. You can subscribe to our newsletter and, and by doing that you will be um, up to date um, for all the scholarship deadlines and, and other opportunities that are available to you. And with that, I conclude my part of the presentation and I would like to switch over to um, Stefan's screen so you can see his slides about the Technical University and more specifically the NIT. Uh, we currently can't hear you. You may still be muted. Thank you very much oh, for the kind introduction and thank you also uh, for giving us the opportunity to present our double degree in engineering and technology management today here with the DAD in the US. 
the double degree is a program which combines a Master of Science in Engineering at the Hamburg University of Technology with a degree in Technology ma Management. So basically this double degree in, enables you to go beyond engineering and today I want to talk a little bit about why that is a good idea and how the program looks like. My name is Stefan Scheuner. I'm the Recruiting and Admissions Manager here at the NIT in Hamburg. We are the Northern Institute of Technology Management and we operate the technology management part of the double degree program. I want to start the presentation with a couple of reasons why we think that it's a good idea for you to go beyond engineering and add the technology management degree on top of the MSc that you can be doing at the TUHH. We think that the challenges that organizations and societies have in the future uh, at their core engineering challenges. When you talk about energy consumption, water supply, CO2 emissions, global supply chains, all of these questions and challenges are at their heart engineering challenges and we think that engineers should get involved and become the missing link between management people and and the engineers that are working to solve these problems. So we think that it's a very good idea to broaden your skill set and get this technology management know-how and skills on top of the engineering degree that you're doing here. This will not only enable you to, to go further in organizations, um, but also improve your employability right from the start, right after graduation. And another thing that our program tries to do and is offering is um, to foster an entrepreneurial mindset with the people that, that join our program. We are focusing on enabling you to take technologies from TUH8 from campus and commercialize these within the program and really try to foster this entrepreneurial mindset in our students. The way we do that is by combining two degrees both entirely in English with the one being an engineering MSc at Hamburg University of Technology and the other one being a technology management MA or MBA at the NIT. The MSc that you will be doing when you join the double degree can be one out of these six international programs that our university offers. Those are the English speaking programs that Hamburg University of Technology offers. You can also combine the double degree with any German master's program but probably those uh, English speaking ones are the ones that you will be more interested in. All of these programs are full-time programs and they are all uh, accredited by either uh, ASIN or the Programrat Akkreditierung in Germany, so they're state recognized uh, accreditation agencies. Same applies for our technology management degree, which is also an accredited program that adds another 90 credit points to the 120 that you are doing in the MSc. If you want to learn more about the MSc programs, you can always go to the website of TUHH, which you reach under www.tuhh.de and there you got an education section and if you go to the education section you got a, a, a subpage for degree courses and the courses leading to a master's course are listed here and then you'll find the six programs that I've just mentioned and if you click on them for example on mechanical engineering and management you'll get more info on the program on the curriculum and on uh, the courses and, uh, and specializations that these programs offer. I'm not going to go into uh, the details of all of these courses because I think 
um, that you will probably do that after the webinar, but I just wanted to make sure that you know where to find these information. Before I go and talk about the technology management part of the degree, I want to uh, give you a couple of impressions of how studying in Hamburg and studying at TUHH looks like. TUHH is a fully-fledged uh, state-recognized university in Hamburg with 7,000 students. 20% of them are international, or roughly 20% of them are international students got a faculty of almost 100 professors and uh, are very research oriented with specialized research fields, for example, in life science, uh, green technology and materials. We are um, a campus university situated in the southern part of the city of Hamburg. Our campus is a very active and lively campus, lots of student initiatives, um, quite an international uh, character as well. Um, also, let's say a, a, a very full social calendar with a summer fest and career fairs and all the um, ins and out of, um, of uh, active student life. We have uh, a couple of very interesting um, student initiatives on campus where students, um, for example, go and build a racing car in the Formula Student Initiative or uh, go and build a, a robot that uh, plays uh, football or soccer, whatever you want to call it. Um, so for our students, there's lots to do on campus even after um, the courses and after uh, classes. The city of Hamburg is uh, also very exciting. Stefan, are you still there? I think you. I think we've lost our presenter, unfortunately, um, it looks like. Hopefully, that's just a glitch in the system. And uh, Stefan Scheune will be back uh, shortly. In the meantime, we can admire um, the beautiful car that the Technical University Hamburg built uh, with the help of their students and um, their little robots here. For those of you listening live, please uh, bear with us here. That's unfortunately always the danger of uh, doing something uh, remotely and using uh, technology. It's wonderful when it works, but uh, sometimes in the middle of your presentation, uh, the internet shuts down or you have other technical uh, difficulties. So um, please bear with us, um, hopefully within a few seconds. Um, He'll be back online. I'm sure he'll uh, restart his computer or um, check his uh, internet connection here. <clears throat> well, I see something's happening. And, I, and he's back. Stefan, can you hear us? I. It looks like he, uh, that he's back, but yes, I see the microphone. Can you hear us? Now I can hear you again. Perfect. <laughs> I uh, cut off for a couple of minutes, I think. Um, yes, perfect. I'm, I'm glad you, you were able to connect uh, quickly again. 
Um, yeah, sorry for that. Uh, we must have had a bit of a connection problem here. I was just talking about the city of Hamburg. I'm not entirely sure where where you've lost me or where I lost you, um, but um, I, I was mentioning that um, city of Hamburg offers also a lot of opportunities, a lot of uh, possibilities for our students, um, not only in terms of um, social activities, but also in terms of career opportunities um, after our um, after graduating from our course. Um, got quite a few international companies operating in Hamburg or being headquartered in Hamburg, um, especially of course in the aviation industry, but also in logistics or um, IT semiconductor industries companies like Airbus, or NXP, or Philips, Bayersdorf, they're all headquartered here, or have their European um, headquarters here. So lots of opportunities also in the higher education sector um, for opportunities of research and um, PhD stu studies afterwards. So uh, a very interesting and, um, and exciting environment here. It looks like that's not the end of the, the internet problems here. Uh, so. Okay, I can hear you again. <laughs> um, but I think you were, you were, I, I think you, you were online because I, I heard you breathing, but I think it's, it's maybe your screen that's frozen. So if you could maybe just uh, close the PowerPoint presentation and open it again, that may help. Uh, because yeah, I, 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 I can I can hear you. So the connection. Um... So it's probably the PowerPoint presentation at the moment that's just uh, frozen. Okay, let me try to restart the PowerPoint presentation and then we'll see whether we can continue with okay. the little introduction of, um, of the NIT. Okay.
Okay, this looks this looks like the slide I wanted to show you. Yes. I'm really sorry about that. It seems like my um, computer is already um, uh, fire arm mode. <laughs> um, we are uh, uh, so I've uh, to recap where where I was. Um, I wanted to use uh, uh, a couple of slides on on um, our institute, the Northern Institute of Technology Management. Um, we are a small not-for-profit institute right on campus of Hamburg University of Technology and we were founded almost 20 years ago by 40 professors from TUHH who thought that it would be a good idea to, to add management education to the portfolio of the university because uh, the university was focusing uh, solely on engineering education and there was this international management education, uh, education missing and that's what we offer here at the NIT. We um, are a very, let's say, a small and exclusive uh, organization because we only take on uh, approximately 25 to 35 students per year, which means that throughout the last couple of years we, we uh, developed a, a network of uh, 500 approximately um, NIT alumni who are now working pretty much uh, all across um, the planet. And um, what we are offering in terms of learning environment is um, is quite unique in, um, in in Hamburg at least and at the most German universities as well because um, we operate entirely in English with um, a ninety or eighty percent uh, international students and also um, uh, international faculty from academia and industry from all sorts of universities, business schools, or research institutes. As I mentioned, we um, are having small classes uh, with 25 to 30 students, which uh, guarantees like a very good ratio professor-student and a very, very uh, good learning experience. And also, um, we offer on-campus living to our students. So the international students that come to us can actually live in the building that they are doing most of the classwork for the technology management degree in. And we also um, are quite proud of our tight links to the industries. So um, we've got quite a few companies that are supporting us either by giving scholarships to our students or um, making it possible to, to um, do internships with them. Uh, we've just been to an uh, one of our partner companies on Monday. Uh, we've taken the current uh, junior class to that company and um, did an excursion there that was really interesting as well. So lots of um, touching points with the industry as well. Our double degree programs always start in uh, September, so the next start is September 2017 and that's the one we are currently also um, uh, recruiting for. A couple of impressions from um, from our classrooms and from our building. Um, the seminar rooms for the technology management classes are in the NIT building, which is also right on campus of the TUHH campus. Um, and uh, as you see, it's all organized in a way that, that we, it allows for group work and, and group interaction right on campus. Um, it's very state-of-the-art technology here. Um, and uh, the composition of the classes is always very international as well. So um, we, we collected the, the stats for the last 15 years, I think. Um, and you can see that uh, students do come from pretty much all over the world. We um, uh, have uh, quite a few Latin American students and Asian students coming in. The German students, obviously, are always um, also are quite a strong group within our program. U.S. and Canada could be more, um, but it's it's picking up really. Um, we had um, we have four U.S. American students in um, last year's class, so out of um, uh, the, the the class size uh, four, that's quite a big um, proportion. That's quite a big group already, um, and we're hoping obviously to have um, more of them this this year. But in, in general, you'll you'll meet people from pretty much every nationality, um, not every nationality, but lots of nationalities. I think we've got 17 nationalities in uh, class 18, so that's the, the current junior class. Um, and that's that's quite a lot for, for in terms of international network and international experience. 
I've mentioned the on-campus living. These are um, our student apartments within our building. Uh, a couple of pictures from them. These are um, single apartments with your own private um, bathroom and a little kitchenette. And um, these are available to our NIT students. And the um, they, uh, every every floor in their building also has two common kitchens, so you also have the opportunity to meet your your neighbors, which are also probably your classmates or from the senior class. Um, so lots of room for interaction with the other NIT students. These rooms are available to NIT students at a rate of 300 euros per month including all um, utilities like electricity and water and internet and stuff like that. So for Hamburg standards, that's that's quite a uh, quite a good rent, quite a good deal, and it's right on campus, so you also save a lot of time, uh, no commute, and uh, a lot of short ways. So that's our NIT building and the on-campus living. And um, now um, I want to tell you a little bit more about the program itself, about the faculty that we are having about the curriculum and um, I want to start with uh, the, the general idea behind our institute is that it allows us to have a flying faculty so we don't have a standing faculty, we have a faculty which we pretty much uh, bring in from, from uh, different institutes, different countries um, which allows us a lot of flexibility and, and, and makes sure that the quality of the teaching is also up to our standards. A couple of management schools or business schools like um, um, IE in, in Madrid, um, other universities like Cranfield or Portland State, um, obviously also some um, professors from TUHH and also practitioners, for example, uh, for financial accounting, we, we have people from, uh, from the uh, consulting companies who are experts in their field. This is what the curriculum is focusing on. We are trying to, first of all, provide our students, who are all engineering students, with a general management foundation where we um, are offering 23 classes in the realm of general management, and those are classes like economics, uh, accounting, strategy, and management, where we want to make sure that our our engineering student students get a, a good grasp of how companies work and in which environment companies are working. And um, once we've done that, we continue with uh, specialization in the management field, which could either be the e, the innovation track, where we teach or try to um, foster your skills in innovation and technology management within a corporate environment, or the entrepreneurial track, which is a project-based learning experience where students are, are going through the whole life cycle of a technology um, and the commercialization of a technology by um, starting their own business. And they, in that e-track, the students really develop ideas and business plans for their own business ideas and they're guided by professors and tutors and also um, practitioners who are entrepreneurs or investors themselves. On top of that, we've got um, extensive uh, foreign language education. For most of you, that would probably be um, German courses. We got um, an intensive German language course at the beginning of the program, four weeks of German language course, um, and then um, during the first two semesters, we've got uh, two language courses, which um, <clears throat> will make or will uh, give you the opportunity to uh, bring your German to a level, which will allow you to interact, especially off campus, uh, because it's really important for us when it comes to internships or other uh, touching points with um, with uh, companies that that your German is at a level where you are able to at least interact and, and make sure that you are understood and that you understand your um, your um, 
the people around you. So these are um, uh, the foreign language classes and on top of that we've got a communication and leadership classes where you learn how to lead groups, negotiate or manage projects and to um, apply all these skills in a practical environment we uh, also include an internship into the curriculum and uh, finish that all with the master thesis. I've mentioned that the, at the very beginning that uh, the technology management track is either uh, an MA or an MBA and uh, the difference between the two degrees is just uh, a professional experience that our students have already acquired. If you've already worked for two years between the end of your bachelor's and the start of your master's degree, then you will graduate from the program with a Master of Business Administration, the MBA, and if you um, do not have these two years of professional experience, you can still be admitted, but you will um, graduate with a Master of Arts and Technology Management. So basically, the same curriculum, the same courses, but due to the accreditation regulations, um, we award the Master of Business Administration for those that have already the professional experience and the Master of Arts for those that um, do not have the professional experience. Our program costs here for the double degree program for the technology management and um, the MSc program are 22,000 euros which includes the tuition for all the courses at the NIT with the technology management courses. The, um, you probably know that most of the um, courses that are not MBA or MA courses um, are non-tuition based, so you will pay only the administrative fees. Um, if you add something like an MBA on top of uh, your uh, MSc will then be in a tuition-based program. And in our case, those are 22,000 euros, which includes the tuition, a foreign language class, a tutoring network, and um, also, obviously, all the administrative fees that you have at TUHH, and also a house program where we get you in touch with uh, families from the Hamburg area, um, which is also another sort of aspect in making sure that you're integrated well into um, the society also outside of uh, the campus. In terms of financing options, uh, the DAD grant was, was mentioned. Um, actually, one of our American students from uh, last year's starting class uh, is also a DAD, uh, is uh, receiving one of these DAD scholarships, so that's uh, brilliant way to cover your cost of living. The 750 euros are pretty much what we also uh, say is necessary in terms of cost of living, um, depending on, I mean, obviously, what sort of ideas you have uh, um, in terms of accommodation, but if it's in, in combination with the accommodation at, uh, at our building, then we are talking about cost of living of approximately 800, maybe 850 euros. Hamburg is, uh, in general, in um, terms of cost of living, probably rather at the higher end in Germany. So um, Hamburg, München, uh, Hamburg and Munich, are, uh, in terms of rent and also um, going out, stuff like that, on the higher end of the spectrum. Um, but uh, with the 750 euros, we reckon that that's a good amount in terms of cost of living. Um, and for the program costs, we, we offer, for very good international students, uh, we offer the opportunity to, um, to apply for an international student loan with us. Um, and we also have a number of industrial scholarships for uh, candidates that have a certain um, academic background for example, um, we are, uh, have one sponsoring company, Procter & Gamble, that's looking for mechatronics engineers and is uh, willing to sponsor one of our students um, for next year's class and, and pay most of the program costs for the, um, for the students. So these are all opportunities that our students have. We've got more info on the industrial scholarships on our website. 
how to apply and which one are available. So you might want to check that out. Um, the website is um, www.nithh.de and um, you can check out, for example, the um, application process here and um, at, at that point you will also find a link to the industrial scholarships and the other financing options and then you see you've got a couple of companies that are offering these industrial scholarships and you can check whether your profile matches the requirements of these companies. Um, and uh, if you feel like one of these companies is exactly looking for somebody like you, then you can um, elaborate a little bit upon that in your uh, motivational letter and uh, we'll then make sure that the company knows about you and um, takes you into consideration when it comes to industrial scholarships. A couple of examples of what our uh, alumni are, are doing because we are um, offering this sort of double qualification with engineering and management which also means that the possibilities in terms of career are, are broadening a little bit for our students and I'll uh, give you a couple of examples here. Um, Vivek for example um, is working as a product marketing engineer for, for NXP, which is also one of our sponsor companies. And he uh, graduated from um, the NIT in 2014 and then he did his uh, sort of graduate engineer training program with NXP and is now working as a, as a marketing engineer there and he's sort of translating market requirements into software requirements and code and products. So that's exactly the intersection between management, or in this case sales and marketing and technology. Uh, another um, option that is often uh, a very interesting career choice for our alumni is um, consultancy. Anna Christina, for example, is an internal pr a project consultant with E.ON, which is a German um, energy supplier, one of the biggest in, in Europe and she's in the strategy department there. Um, Andrew, and, uh, one of our American alumni, is, uh, uh, did his um, MSc in environmental engineering and he's now uh, in the MBA with us and he's now an environmental engineer at an um, engineering and architecture consultancy which is specialized in water and energy and he's um, He's not, he is from Kansas City and he's now back in Kansas City and um, he also uh, is one of our NIT ambassadors so if you want to uh, know more, uh, get first-hand uh, uh, information from an NIT alumni, you can uh, send Andrew an email and um, he'll, he'll uh, be happy to answer and provide you with more information. And another option, another route that some of our students are taking, or alumni are taking, is actually academia. So uh, Ernesto, for example, is um, now a professor in robotics at the Tech de Monterrey, which is one of the um, best um, universities in Mexico. Um, and he's specialized in robotics, did his mechatronics MSc in Hamburg and the MBA with us and then went on to do a PhD and is now back in academia and is doing very interesting stuff uh, in uh, the robotics field. And another opportunity obviously for students from our class or from alumni from our class are big international um, sort of technology oriented companies. Very good example is Procter & Gamble where um, as I mentioned we also have um, a scholarship available this year and um, quite a few of our students uh, do either a scholarship or an internship uh, with Procter & Gamble and then end up working for them. Carson Lukert who is uh, engineering, head of um, engineering in the um, baby care uh, department is uh, quite a fan of our students so um, this is also one of those um, points where you will be able to get in touch with people from the industry who will then um, sort of uh, 
provide you with opportunities for example for the year internship or for, for your MSc thesis. Now if you um, are interested in um, becoming one of the new NIT students from class 19, um, it's very easy to apply for our program. What you need to know is that you first have to apply for an MSc at TUHH and the documents you need for that are obviously your study certificates and your transcript of records. You will need a CV. You will, if you have uh, uh, finished your bachelor's in, in the US, not need a proof of English proficiency, so that's uh, something that the American students do not need. Um, you'll need a statement of purpose, that's the motivational letter, and two letters of recommendation. The letters of recommendation can come from faculty members, um, for example, supervisors of your bachelor thesis, or they can also come from supervisors from um, from a job if you've already uh, work experience. Um, and we ha do have uh, a template for those letters of recommendation on our website, so you can download them uh, and have them issued by uh, the academic or professional supervisors. What's important for you to know is that um, our application window closes um, at the end of March, but in order to uh, be able to apply, you need to do the so-called pre-check for your MSc eligibility. And that means, uh, since the pre-check takes about a week to be processed, that you should start your pre-check before March 24. You can actually um, do the pre-check today because you won't need any documents. You just need to enter the uh, course of study that you did, your, uh, your grade point average, um, and some other info on the grading system from your university, and that will be enough to, um, to, to do the pre-check. And if you pass the pre-check, you will get a link for an application portal where you can upload all of these documents that I've just mentioned. And um, it if you need more info on, on how the application process works, um, what you can do is you can go back to our website, for example, um, and, and look at these three steps that you need to do. Um, the pre-check, the application portal, and then the submission of the data and your application um, or you can look at the um, application guide that we've provided as a um, as an attachment to this presentation, or you can go to the TUHH uh, homepage um, and just click on the application and and find more info there. So it's really, I mean, the information is on, uh, at a lot of places and it's really easy to find. Um, just keep in mind that you need to stick to this uh, March deadline in order to be able to 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 make it in time um, for the before the uh, application window stop uh, closes. Not in entirely sure whether I'm sharing the right screen now, no. but um, we don't we don't uh, see the presentation anything from 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 my presentation. We don't see the presentation right now. We just see the um, organizer screen at the moment. The initial like um, background picture that we had for the webinar. Now we can see it again. Uh, I'm back now. <laughs> lost, lost the connection again. The screen is at the moment. No, the now. Did you close it? Now we can see it again. Uh, let's try to get this back in the presentation mode. There we are. Perfect. Okay. Um, Sorry again for that. Um, so where were we? Um, do the pre-check before March 24th. That's basically all you need to know. Um, and the rest is then explained on the website. And it's um, pretty standard documents that you need. Um, and, and, and March 30th, 
31st is the deadline um, that the application portal is closing and in order to be able to access the application portal you need a successful pre-check. So do the pre-check before March 21st and you do that by going to the TUHH homepage and click on application and then pick the uh, international master's degree application thing here and then it's all there. So it's it's really very simple. And if your interconnection internet connection works uh, works better than mine, then uh, you should be able to uh, to finish the pre-check within like ten minutes. Um, so this is the big button that you're gonna have to press and uh, start the application. And the rest is explained here. It's really straightforward. Um, and um, I think that's pretty much pretty much all I wanted to say. I'm sorry it took a little bit longer because I was um, struggling with the internet connection here. Um, but um, but I, um, I I hope you uh, nevertheless enjoyed the presentation. Let's see. Um, uh, if you do have any more questions um, regarding the program or regarding the application process, um, you can always get in touch with me, um, preferably via this email here, which is admissions at nithh.de, um, because they are the, the admissions team, which is um, uh, uh, me and, 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 and two of my colleagues, will be able to, to answer your questions. Um, and obviously, we also have some time now, I guess, to, mm -hmm. to answer one or two questions. So, um, more than happy to, to answer them. Um, and, and thank you very much for your, for your attention. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, before we get to some of the questions, um, I wanted to point out again, uh, we do have a few handouts. Uh, so for those listening live, you can go to the section on the right hand side in your panel and click on the handouts uh, button. And there should be three handouts in, in the, as a PDF that you can just click on and download. Um, but you can also download the handouts later on. Uh, I will upload them in the archive along with the presentation and with the recording so they're accessible there as well. Um, if you do have questions right now feel free to type them in your uh, in the question box and I will be happy to ask them. Um, in the meantime I um, had a few questions uh, that um, maybe um, other students may um, also wonder about. So the requirement for the for the MA or M MBA, uh, what BAs um, are in, from the U.S. are accepted? Here in the U.S., um, if you would like to pursue um, a graduate degree, you don't necessarily have to have the bachelor's in the, in the same field, but I know that in Germany that's um, a little bit more strict than, than that. Um, would you um, name a few um, BAs that are acceptable, just so that listeners have a better um, idea of, of what is required for, for them to have um, as, as a bachelor's to be able to study at NIT? Sure. Yeah, sure. That's a, that's a very good question because um, in terms of uh, eligibility or which uh, bachelor's do qualify me for, for the double degree, the, the sort of bottleneck is always the MSc program at Hamburg University of Technology. Um, for us here at the NIT, um, the eligibility criteria are pretty much down to um, having received an admission from TUHH from, for one of the MSc programs, um, and then we obviously look also at the at the academic performance and the academic capabilities, stuff like that. Um, but we always need you to have uh, the admission already for the MSc, and for the MSc, you're absolutely right. The um, criteria to um, to to be admitted are a bit stricter and. Um, not stricter, but uh, the the idea behind um, behind the uh, admission into one of the MSc programs is um, more of a consecutive program. So, if you want to, for example, apply for the MSc in mechatronics, the um, TUHH expects you to have either a mechanical engineering degree or a mechatronics degree already as a as a bachelor's. Um, and in order to, to see what sort of requirements you have, um, you should go to um, the application area that I've um, just uh, shown you here in the TUHH website. Um, and then um, 
you can have a look at the application guideline, which tells you a little bit about what GPA is expected, um, things like that. Um, and the second criteria, um, set of criteria would be the, the sort of specific requirements for the MSc programs. And they can be found as well under this link. Um, and then you can, for example, look at the MSc program that you are interested in. Um, and for example, for uh, a mechatronics program, you just click on the on the link and then um, you'll find a, a PDF which lists the sort of subjects that are expected to be included in your in your bachelor's um, course. So for example for mechatronics um, you will need uh, an, an emphasis on mathematics, mechanics, control theory um, and other fundamentals of mechanical engineering in order to, to qualify. So um, if you are not sure whether you fulfill the, these criteria, um, choose the MSc that you're interested in and then just uh, look at the table and see which subjects you're supposed to have had during your bachelor's um, and then see whether the, the quantity of the subject uh, is uh, quantity of the um, subjects that you've had during your bachelor's is sufficient for, for what is demanded by TUHH. Okay, great, thank you. Another question um, in regards to the student loan, you said that um, very good students um, may, may uh, receive a st student loan. Would you elaborate a little bit what a very good student is um, for you, so what the criteria are um, to be considered a very good student? Um, yeah, that's um, that's also a good question. The the student loan is, is something that we have in um, cooperation with the local savings bank Sparkasse Harburg, um, which gives students from abroad an opportunity to apply for such a loan here in Germany. Because usually international students have. Uh, problems are it's almost impossible for international students to apply for a student loan in Germany because uh, German banks always require somebody to vouch or to back the loan um, and with very good students with students that um, we are confident in um, the NIT is willing to back for such a student loan that gives international students access to these loans which are usually not uh, available to international students and, and to these also um, conditions which are um, uh, we as we think quite uh, quite good for our students um, very good in this case means that um, not necessarily that you need to have a certain uh, GPA, but um, within within our uh, admissions process at the NIT, um, we also include an interview. Um, and um, from the impression that we had at the interview, and from what we've seen in terms of academic performance, um, we just make uh, an assumption of whether the student will be um, or will have a high chance of succeeding in the. Uh, degree course, um, whether there is a commitment to to the sort of field of technology management and whether um, we expect the students to have a, a very good employability afterwards. And if these criteria are met, um, then we offer a student loan to the student which the NIT is willing to uh, support in terms of the application. So that's that's pretty much the, um, the overall picture that we are interested in. And, um, it's really hard to um, pin down on, on a certain GPA or anything, mm -hmm. but um, if we feel the student is committed to the double degree and also to to, to maybe staying in Germany afterwards, um, all of these things, um, then then we are offering such a loan or such a loan application to, to our students. Okay, great, thanks. And so um, I have uh, one more question, and that's just a very quick one. Um, would you uh, verify that the 22,000 euros um, that um, you, you mentioned as the program fees, those are really the fees for the entire program? So that's not a semester or an academic year fee, that's that's the overall That's for total. the whole program, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Um, it's uh, for the whole program and it's uh, payable in four installments. So at the beginning of each semester, um, it's uh, five and a half thousand euro program costs. Um, 
here in Germany uh, with the MSc programs, it's, it does happen that students take more than four semesters, and especially with the combination of the double degree, that can happen. So um, oftentimes students ask if I need a fifth semester, will I have to pay another five and a half thousand euros? Um, no, that's not the case. The 22,000 are sort of the overall fee. Um, the, the only thing that uh, will go on top of that um, if you need longer than four semesters, which which happens for um, for quite a few students, um, then you will have to stay enrolled at the Hamburg University of Technology, and there's a there's this enrollment fee semesterbeitrag in Germany, which will be uh, roughly another 300 euros or something like that. So if you need more than the four semesters, the 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 additional cost will be something like 300 euros per extra term, but the 22,000 are the program costs for, for the double degree, for both degrees of the double degree, and for the whole two years. Great, thank you. That was all the questions that I had that came up during the webinar. Uh, we don't have any additional questions right now, um, but again, um, you showed your um, contact information to so anyone um, who's listening right now or who will uh, view the recording later, um, feel free to get in touch uh, with Stefan afterwards and with his office if you have any additional questions. Um, before uh, we uh, close this webinar for today, Stefan, is there anything in addition you would like to mention that um, you didn't include in the in the presentation so far? Uh, I think for, for now this is pretty much all I wanted to say. I just wanted uh, to, to thank you for your attention. Also, thank you for, for hosting this and organizing this. And uh, thank you for putting up with my technical <laughs> difficulties here. Uh, uh, but um, yeah, if you have any further questions, just, just drop me an email or get in touch with me via Skype or anything. That's uh, always the easiest way, I think. Okay. Well, thank you very much uh, for, for joining us today. Um, I hope you have a wonderful evening. Um, our day in the U.S. just started, at least on the West Coast. <laughs> um, so for, for anyone listening, um, I hope you have a wonderful day. And uh, please uh, keep an eye out for uh, our upcoming webinars. Uh, again, this webinar will be shared on our DAD webinar website. And also the handouts and the presentation uh, will be uploaded there um, at some point today so you will have access to that uh, later on. Um, again, Stefan, thank you very much for joining us today. I hope you have a wonderful evening and um, I hope I will be able to talk to you in the future. Have a good day. Bye. Thank you. Vielen Dank und auf Wiedersehen. Tschüss. <laughs>